and welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and just talk about some of the things that we found interesting going on in the world of Linux, open source, floss, all that fun stuff. I'm Vin, and that up mm -hmm. there, that's one Joe Bryan, um, <laughs> with a <laughs> moderate to large penguin infestation, some people might say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and our soon-to-be proud Ryzen 3000 Zen 2 parent. Uh, yes. That's a very, very large soon there, because apparently it's going <laughs> to be July 21st. <laughs> I thought about that. We were talking about that in the pre show. That's a hard wait. Yeah. It's two weeks from now, basically. That, that is two yeah. weeks of checking at minimum <laughs> twice mm -hmm. status updates. <laughs> Even twice an twice. hour. Twice. <laughs> Even though you have it set on your... To get text alerts. Nope, I'm just in yep. case. That's where we at. Um, oh, beautiful people. How's it going? It is another fantastic, <laughs> fantastic day for Linux. Fantastic Yay! week for Linux. And um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jill, you survived like the three uh, billion earthquakes, right? Yeah, dude, there's lots of... Dude, yeah, there's, been, there's been enough earthquakes to where there's conspiracy theories. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lots of shaking going on here in LA. I was actually at the local mall buying buying uh, this plush what? penguin. Uh, actually, it's the biggest penguin in my collection now. <laughs> Isn't it cute? So I was buying this plus penguin. My Steve husband this found is one. <laughs> horrifying. Thank you for letting me see. <laughs> when the seven point one earthquake hit, uh, so yeah, uh, that was a thing. But some happiness came out of it. And mm -hmm. uh, but life goes on. And Monday night went to community hack night at Riot Games once again. Had a lot of fun there. But yeah, so I do love my new penguin. <laughs> It it's is so big. Truly disturbing. Um, Pedro, outside, outside of ordering Ryzen's that you have to wait on, um, anything new going on, babe? Uh, not really, no. It's like three dropping 320 pounds on the Ryzen. Basically, whatever what was in my head uh, that I could have used for this particular yeah. sub-segment of the show is gone. <laughs> Don't worry. I reminded him in the pre-show. Um, <laughs> I'm good like that. We're going to be doing some things. I I mm -hmm. bought a new preamp. If um, if you're a Patreon, go watch the uncut version. Uh, we're like right, at the end, <laughs> right around the three hour mark where I just bleh. Just <laughs> preamp. Just, like, that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. Poor on this man. end, it was very interesting. I was like, oh, great. Troubleshooting live. And I knew full well that I couldn't shut the stream down because I talked too much smack about, you can't take this down. It's too modular. I built it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I knew I was able to like actually pull and bring down the audio and bring it back up without killing the stream. I think it's, the, I mean, it's clearly the preamp, but it was one of those issues as well as talking to Jordan. I was like, please be reproducible because, mm -hmm. and no, nope, just kind of tapped on it. Uh, Sunday after I get everything done, came back to life and I was like, I don't trust that. Nope. So long story, a little bit longer. Um, to get a new preamp, it's Smurf Blue, which goes along with the bright, garishly red interface. I have. It's like I got Skittles in my rack, man. Uh, <laughs> Yay! You need to go for the RGBs. Hear the rainbow. Yes. Hear the rainbow. <laughs> but I did have an excuse to Taste order a Russian-made uh, vacuum tube for it because that thing's probably twelve years old. So that'll be a fun <laughs> video. Maybe I'll, I'll put that up a video for everyone. They'll be like, hey, watch Vin electrocute himself again. So <laughs> that's pretty much that. So uh, let's just get right into it with uh, everyone was super excited when IBM's like, hey, man, we're going to buy a Red Hat. And they're like, yay, this is great. No problems at all. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you know, you want to talk about conspiracy theories, just have some major Linux uh, developer uh, get bought out by some major corporation. And well, uh, we were talking about uh, red stuff and blue stuff. Well, Red Hat is now officially a part of Big Blue. Thirty-four billion dollars yeah <laughs> that's uh that's a bit of an acquisition for uh ibm right there and they once again like the, the whole article is available on the show notes don't you worry you can always click the link but it's basically just everyone at red hat going 
we will not change our priorities at all. What we've been doing up to this point is what we're going to keep doing, and we're going to in- keep improving on it, um, despite being a part of IBM. And IBM is going, yeah, the only way that it makes sense for us to have spent this much money on Red Hat uh, to have this revenue share with them is to uh, let them do their thing and let them continue to be profitable. So everyone seems to be on board. It's like, okay, things will not change at all. So we hope. <laughs> well, I mean, the CEO of uh, IBM, she was like, yo, you, you don't spend yeah. $35 billion on a company to start messing with it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Which I think is a good thing. I mean, you know, it's IBM. You, you can say for good and bad. I mean, IBM was decidedly evil through most of the 90s until they turned into, you know, the lovable little giant corporate overlord they are now. And They stay away from anything now. <laughs> you can see. Maybe I was thinking, is like you get to think about some of the good things of like that have come at IBM because I do have experience having to deal with, and maybe that's not a loving way to say it, like AS400 because – like backwards compatibility and setting up stuff like that. You can take stuff written for AS400 like in the 80s and run it on a mm-hmm. modern implementation. So that bring those yeah. changes over to Linux and into um, RHEL. That'll be neat. Also, mm-hmm. everyone keep your fingers crossed. I got my toes crossed, man. OS Warp 3 Blue Hat. <laughs> uh. gonna take, that's that's going to be the year of the Linux desktop. Yes. They're going to bring it back. <laughs> The IBM compatibles yeah. return. <laughs> oh, ooh. <laughs> no. Bad <breakup. laughs> Well, you know, as uh, Pedro and uh, Finn just mentioned, uh, and as we have stated before many times on the show, IBM CEO Gina Rametti has promised to keep Red Hat independent, open source focused, and community driven under current management and CEO Jim Whitehurst. And actually, this is this is really great because now IBM and Red Hat are positioned for their next phase of growth with continued partnerships with Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, et cetera, et cetera, and other vendors for the multi-cloud future of private and public clouds. And that's so the big now, one right there. Yeah, it, right there. It's because yeah. uh, Microsoft has Azure, uh, Amazon has AWS, and Google has their own Google Cloud. Yeah. IBM was sitting there going, we don't have a cloud company. We don't have a cloud <laughs> yes. service going on. Mm-hmm. So, hey, Red Hat, you want money? Mm-hmm. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we go. It's interesting times yeah. indeed. So, <laughs> big news. Uh, the latest in cutting-edge distro technology oh, the big one. has been released <laughs> upon the public. <laughs> yeah. Look, right now, it's still... <laughs> And Relevant. also, <laughs> Debian 10 has come out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's here. Yay. There's new features. There's new stuff. Themes and wallpapers. Uh, Gnome 3.30. Kernel 4.19. I'm down with that. OpenGDK, get that's rid of current. that. App Armor, that's enabled by default. Mm-hmm. A better love story than uh, some other security. So no JS, NF tables. Um, Support ARM64, all that. Python 2 is dead. That's great. Python 3. Mailman, Bash, uh, Secure Boot, and the Live Installer, which I used because yes. um, mm-hmm. Pedro's box is running Debian 10 right now. Well, my box on your end, anyway. Giggity. <laughs> this, is, this is the Pedro box. This is on the network. If you come here and you get on the network, there's a box. It's called Pedro, and that's called Pedro's <laughs> box. Um, I'm looking into, I've been waiting on this to kind of swap it out with, um, 1804 LTS. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see, you know, when this was baked, put it on, did the net install. That was clean. No, admittedly, I, if you have gigabit e- ethernet, you can laugh at me, but you know, I get between five and 800 down. I mean, it was pff, done, but what I really liked about it, we were talking about this earlier, is that in the install, it's like, what do you want? And I was like, I, I don't think I've ever installed Debian with a GUI before. This was a new experience. It's like, this is too mm-hmm. easy. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> desktop manager. It's like, what do you want? It's like, XC. And it's like, I got you, fam. Peace. No gnome, no extra. I mean, it. I even had to, because I really like, um, what is that, gnome system manager? Yeah. Just, yeah. I, I like the dancey GUI lines. And 
I put that, it didn't even include that. It was a very base install. Um, what, are you, what are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. I can show it to everyone right now. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, this is basically the final bake we had already. Oh, Brazilian flag. Clever. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, this is the final bake from what we've been talking about uh, over the past couple of weeks. Because it's like, oh, yeah, Debian 10 Buster is coming out. And this is that. Uh, this is the one point in the Debian stable life that we can't really call it stale. It is just Debian stable. It, it's the new release. It's using a current. It, admittedly, it's the long lived branch of the oh, kernel. Okay, you're going to say that. And I'm <laughs> going to be like, hey, man, did you check out that Firefox version it shipped with? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because I did. I was like, wow, really? Uh, it did yeah, with yeah, Firefox, Firefox DSR. DSR. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> And Python 2, they're finally putting it out to pasture, which, you know, yeah. it's Debian Sable we're talking about. About damn time. Yeah. But, hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, we, and of course, we have a, a faster known de desktop, 3.30, which we, we've all enjoyed. And the packages have actually moved from library GTK2 to library GTK3, which is mm -hmm. really wonderful. And, of course, it defaults to Wayland instead of the XORG display server. And, you know, as we've talked about before many times, Debian being the Swiss Army knife of all distros, Buster supports more hardware and more single board computers, including the new Pine64 Plus, uh, Pinebook for ARM64, the ARM HF64, the Odroid, et cetera, et cetera, and RISC-V systems. And like Vin, um, Actually, I installed Debian 10 on my three-monitor gaming rig in the hall, and it worked beautifully, beautifully like every other Debian distro before it. And I did use the, the GUI Calamari's installer also for the first time, like Venn did. And it, was, it went smooth. And I wanted to test the new GNOME with Wayland on Debian, and it worked beautifully. So, nice. yay. <laughs> uh, I like how you put uh, Waylon on the gaming rig. That's adorable. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know, that's going to change. it's the hallway yeah. rig. <laughs> yeah, it's the hallway rig. <laughs> Life hack. Hit X, tap XFCE. At, I mean, it's 412. It's going to be 412 forever. Uh, I wouldn't say, if you're looking at this, it's very light. Clean install. Boots. Same speed as 1804. Is what you want to look at for this. And I know somebody's going to scream at me. If you're looking for, like, a stable base to build something on and you don't want to use canonical for whatever reason maybe you're still like oh no they're going to take my 32 support away tomorrow which they won't but it's something to look at i mean it's completely uh, you use scent i don't hate okay but this <laughs> Debian's modern compared to scent do you like your current yeah. version starting with three <laughs> Hey, man, you were talking stable. I thought, okay, uh, sent. <laughs> this is one of the things that kind of bugs me is because like the uh, software I use is like, we're sent. I'm like, no, it, it, it's sent. This is why, why I genuinely have Fedor Linux instead of Fedora because I got some things crammed in weird places to trick. <laughs> Specific library versions. Hey, man, 32-bit apps. Yeah, speaking of, uh, mm -hmm. so you may remember two weeks ago, uh, Canonical said, we're totally getting rid of 32-bit, you guys. And then a week after that, they said, we're totally not getting rid of 32-bit, you guys. Uh, and, you know, I guess someone up in Canadian land took notice and the University of Toronto decided, okay, we have a lot of stuff running on Linux. And so we need to make sure that everything that we have and everything that the people who work for us and the students who are using our systems, uh, that all of the applications which may or may not be 32-bit are accounted for. So they have basically wrote, uh, I think it was uh, Chris Siebenman? Siebenman? Uh, that, um, that sounds German. I'm probably butchering that. Ben? <laughs> what? No, okay. Dude, uh, I was. <laughs> you told me I, I was didn't have to for listen some help to you on the pronunciation. When you were what now? No idea. <laughs> but yeah, it is uh, basically Chris's post is describing how they, uh, if uh, you are a University of Toronto student and you want to help them figure out exactly what they need, 
uh, they have laid out everything that you need to do. Just if you're running Linux and you use 32-bit applications, Cybernum. we all know we all know that Steam is going to be uh, the one common factor in all of them because it's university students. Come on, uh, <laughs> but yeah, but they want to know exactly what is running and what applic- uh, what libraries and support applications they need to have for 32-bit support to continue. So that's good. <laughs> no, man, I, I'm just. I, I like seeing this and it is a good time who cares, you know, and it's not gonna be an issue. This will eventually be an issue. And, you know, it's using the, you know, just the Linux kernels audit system to track these little nasties down because they will be nasties in the future. Proactive is best active. I mean, this is yes. somebody, this is somebody who will be, when, if they're in university, they're going to be sought after because this is forward thinking. Now trying to convince other people that mm-hmm. w- we need to start addressing this right now. That's a whole different conversation, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. So, Joe, you were talking about Pine Books. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, speaking of Pine Books, so at the beginning of May, we talked about a recent prototype of the much anticipated Pine Book Pro Linux laptop that was being tested. And now we have a date to pre order. The 199 Pine Book Pro will be available for pre orders July 25th, 2019. Yay! And what's awesome is you can choose from three distros at launch, a homegrown OS featuring the Mate desktop, a build of Chromium OS, or Android. And it actually has, yeah, it actually has um, a a new security uh, tool that will let you disable automatically all your your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radios and webcam at a click of a button. And that was a really new, nice uh, addition uh, to yeah. the Pinebook Pro. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I want one because mm-hmm. I, I wanted one of the old <laughs> uh, Pinebooks because, oh, it's a laptop. Yes. That's built completely <laughs> uh, on open source technology. It's, uh, it's got an ARM SOC as the heart of it. I want one. But $199 is a little bit much for what would basically constitute a toy for me. And mm, this is coming yeah. from the person who goes on eBay <laughs> to look for old laptops. So yeah. it's, a bit, it's a bit much for me personally. So, yeah. <laughs> it, it looks too much like a laptop. I don't want it. Oh. <laughs> it is a laptop. <laughs> it looks like one. Yeah, it it is basically a Chromebook without the official yeah. uh, Android support. I could put a bagel in that form factor, okay? <laughs> it would still look like a laptop. It doesn't <laughs> make it. It's in the laptop form factor. Let, let's meet halfway. You know, mm-hmm. fourteen like fourteen inch laptop with a ten eighty p screen. That's the default for businesses nowadays. I should know. That's basically what everyone at work is running. Uh, oh, completely <laughs> off topic, man. Alexa with the NHS. Uh, (laughs) yeah that's getting integrated so look forward to that yeah (laughs) (laughs) if they had to pick android and they they went with the worst one but whatever uh the the pine book pro it it is actually like the specs and the price are very much in line with each other it's just it's a toy for me it would be a toy so it's it's a bit Mm. much it's two hundred dollars. I mean, you buy it because you dig it and you want to play with it. I mean, yes, it, yeah. it's a tinker trot, and fortunately, there's a pretty good community built around it. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. So yeah, speaking of uh, the community of Pine sixty four, in an article from Tech Republic entitled "Developers: How Pine sixty four is Creating a Community to Compete with the Raspberry Pis." So Pine64 is taking the philosophy, the community, and interactivity that the Raspberry Pi has to the next level by not only offering single board computers, but the shells they are contained in, like laptops, tablets, and phones. And there is a really good interview with the Pine64 community manager, Lukasa's Eric Kinksky? <laughs> I, I know I'm butchering that. <laughs> but um, he states... While SBCs and are and will remain our bread and butter, there is no denying that our vision for Pine64 has expanded beyond the SBC market. 
The core aim of our project remains the same, however, to foster a community and bring affordable ARM64 devices to developers and end users. We are building ecosystems, that is to say we strive for convergence between our SBCs and other ARM64 devices we manufacture. So, you know, great with Pine64. They have been so good with their community. And I can see that they're really trying to be the Raspberry Pi of all devices. Well, this is one of the so. things that separates the Raspberry Pi from a lot of other Pi-ish devices is mm -hmm. the community, the development work mm -hmm. that's went into that from that. And, you know, it's good to see. I mean, you know, if you could be buying, you know, a Pine64, everything along those lines, that, you know there's a chance of getting something up and running or a lot of tools are going to already exist. You're not going to have to reinvent the wheel and that's going to be brilliant. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. And since I've been a little bit too positive, uh, this whole show thus far, I feel like I need to point out one thing. One of the questions that they asked was why use a 720 mm -hmm. P display on the pine tab, which is their, uh, tablet. Ah, uh, yeah. And he mm -hmm. said other economic considerations, uh, uh, the seven, uh, the seven, other than the economic considerations, the 720p panel for the Pine tab was also chosen for the sake of good performance. Um, and then they say, we felt that on a 10.1 LCD IPS panel, the 720p looked uh, really quite sharp. You've never held a 1920 by 1208 inch tablet in your hand. What's, if the, you resolution? Think that's sharp. <laughs> What's the resolution? Oh, no, I don't know. Um, Nintendo Switch. Uh, 1920 by incorrect yeah. <laughs> 720p, seven, yeah. Uh, 720. Both of you <laughs> figure out one day. I don't ask questions, I don't know the answer to. It's <laughs> <laughs> a strategy, <laughs> but that's the thing. I have the uh, the shield tablets, uh, those are eight inch and those were 1920 by 1200. I, I have a Nexus 10, it's like 2000 yes, by, divide zero, by zero, right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it looks nice, but. Even this like hundred and fifty dollar Amazon tablet looks fine at ten eighty p IPS. I mean, it's a two hundred dollar thing with the keyboard. Yeah, it, yeah. It, I get their the, the economic concern. I get it. It's like okay, it's cheap. Gotcha. But don't say it looks sharp. <laughs> that, that's marketing, baby. That's marketing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and, that's know, what I would yeah. expect from an evil, evil person like you because you're a villain. Villains. Andrew. You are um, <laughs> internet group. <laughs> <laughs> As Brandon Mozilla, internet villain for, you guessed it, supporting DNS privacy. Yeah, the UK's internet service providers, that's ISPA, oh boy. trade group, and all that, they've nominated the browser maker for its proposed effort to roll out a security, oh no, feature uh, that will, get this, bypass UK filtering obligations and parental can think of the children, you know... You know they're being shady when somebody throws in, think of the children, undermining mm -hmm. yeah. safety standards. Mm -hmm. In the UK, Pedro, I mean, this is uh, DNS over HTTPS. It's secure. Mm -hmm. It's a brilliant idea. And you know what? All the money. Go ask Australia how that worked out when they spent all the money for like, <laughs> we're going to protect the children. And they know you're just going to teach the kids how to plug in a yeah. different DNS geniuses. I mean, I was, I, I remember being a kid. All right. Um, Basically that's what everyone <laughs> in the UK has been doing. It's like, Oh, we're going to uh, tightly regulate exactly which porn sites you can access and which other sites that we don't agree with that you can access. We're going to regulate those ever since they started doing that. The VPN usage has spiked in the UK. Mm -hmm. I yeah. coincidence, <laughs> I'm guessing. People yeah. don't like being censored on the internet. And all I can say to that is team villain. Parents, if you're out there, you're like, oh, well, I'll just um, put a password on the uh, Wi-Fi at a certain... All you're doing is teaching kids how to crack WPA2. Oh, yeah. That's all you're doing. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, we need a better way to do that. So by all means, go on. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is ridiculous, man. I mean, this is this yeah. is the whole argument against encryption, but dumber. And to be yeah. fair, they did uh, put out, uh, there's been an update from the ISPA that they said, oh, this, uh, this like event is held in jest and that particular uh, award was thrown in as like... Uh, a joke of some sort. 
And the Telegraph, uh, that was the article I read, they basically ripped them a new one. Uh, and yeah, it's DNS over HTTPS. All of your DNS requests are now encrypted, which means that ISPs who are doing the lazy thing and blocking your DNS requests to certain specific URLs, that doesn't work anymore, which means they're actually going to have to put some work in, and that's going to cost them money. That mm -hmm. is why they branded Mozilla as a villain. And I was at the uh. point, it's like, okay, maybe I'll I'll go back to using Chrome. I've been using Firefox for a while now, and it's pretty good. But uh, I could go back to Chrome now. Now I'm not going anywhere. Now I'm sticking yeah. with Firefox. I, I would just yeah. like to apologize on behalf of Linux Gamecast LLP that Pedro had an opportunity to say all your DNS are belong to us. Belong to us. <laughs> Damn it. I feel responsible for that in some way. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Sinelira. It's a thing, man. Sinelira. Sinelira. <laughs> it only has the one E and two R's, so I'm guessing I'm with Jill on this one. It's Sinelira. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to Sinelira. <laughs> so... They got a bit of news for June, um, and the big takeaway from this is hardware acceleration. You're like, what is this thing? This is Synfinity, a little website. And there's like 16 versions of this. The one you want to use is the GG, the good game version. <laughs> um, but the new version supports mm -hmm. NVN code and CUDA support for rendering uh, and some other of the core plugins. Uh, we'll start working with OpenGL. I'm happy to see this, mainly because this is always been what was it originally Joe broadcast 2000 yeah correct <laughs> way back in the day and it's an nle i mean unfortunately mm -hmm. as julie i think you gave a mention is if, if you take a look at this it looks like mm -hmm. something from the 2000 don't it yeah oh definitely <laughs> Yeah, and you know, yeah, and the original was released by Heroin Virtual in 2002. And yeah, it was the first uh, NLE available on Linux. And you know, it, <laughs> it wasn't the prettiest inf interface, but actually quite powerful when it didn't crash uh, with the original. They, they had stability issues in, in those, those first few years. And yeah, you know, there are three branches of Sinalera in the open source community and Sinalera GG Infinity or the good guy edition is the ro rolling release version with updated pass patches. And actually last year I played with the Cinderella CV community version stable release and was very impressed with how much improved the interface was and how stable it was and that it did not crash anymore. Yay! <laughs> And now Cinelera GG has all the tools needed by an NL, a modern NLE, including video editing, color correction, compositing, motion graphics, and audio mastering. And honestly, it has a lot of the features that DaVinci Resolve has with an interface that looks a bit Adobe Premiere Pro from the early 2000s. So it's still, the interface is still a little old looking, but it's very powerful and very stable now. And, you know, a, a nice alternative um, to Caden Live. <laughs> See, the good, good thing about yeah. the, like, 20 years between... <laughs> <that's> 2000, <laughs> 99, 2000, because mm -hmm. I, I see this, and I played around with it a few months back before this was added in. It defeated me. It's like, I, oh. no. Because, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it looks like Premiere Pro. We're thinking, like, 99, 2000, or if you ever played with, like, Soft Image 3D. Yes. And Irix um, yeah. or Avid. Mm -hmm. Did that like Unixy looking uh like TK mm -hmm. interface? It, it's a yes. nightmare. It's you you needed a class, a couple of classes, or some books to grok those interfaces. Um and it doesn't mm -hmm. really help things that it's maintained the uh GIMP layout of old of yeah. the multi-window <laughs> things like what interfaces have evolved for yes, the better. Definitely. 100 percent um <laughs> incredibly powerful software steep learning curve to this but again i'm excited to see mm -hmm. cuda support because this is something that all yes. other non-linear video editors outside of davinci resolve on linux are missing yes exactly. and this is an absolute must in 2019 mm -hmm. to be usable because at minimum you're going to be dealing with 1080p <laughs> 60 editing uhd 60 
out of the question. Yeah. Without yeah. hardware acceleration for at least your timeline. Yeah. And they even have 8K support, which is really awesome. Yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm going to use like 11K. <laughs> <laughs> and make my nvidia card get an out of memory error in a video yeah. editor which i've done <laughs> yes <laughs> it is brilliant um mm -hmm. take a look at that nightmare train if you want it's completely free it's excellent work it is uh mm -hmm. just hard mode you want yeah yeah <laughs> all right uh what do we have up next oh new curdle yeah. yeah so this is very exciting thank you to our theron and chat for this one a Linux kernel 5.2 has been released, and this is a huge release with 5,900. <laughs> I just Try messed again. that one up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> with 500,900. <laughs> 596,000 new lines. Okay, go on from there. <laughs> I'm I'm watching a view meter. I'm I'm not going to have to edit this out and post. Okay, I'm just waiting. So yeah, it's uh, it's I a new kernel release. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so Linus Torvalds uh, dubbed Linux kernel 5.2 Bobtail Squid, of course, inspired by his scuba dri diving adventures. So that makes sense. I'm more interested in scuba driving. <laughs> Scuba driving, <laughs> scuba I do diving. That. I, I totally would be down for some scuba driving. I don't know. It's like, do, do you like put a saddle on like scuba divers and ride them? <laughs> oh my goodness! Is it like kitty cat rodeo? <laughs> so, anyways, this release includes Sound Open Form Firmware, a project that brings open source firmware to DSP audio devices and was spearheaded by Google and Intel. Yeah, we've been wanting that in the Linux kernel actually for quite some time. And now the GeForce GTX 1650 gets Nouveau support. Whoop. And. Really, which is really, really awesome. And new open source GPU drivers for ARM Molly de devices, which will make them run a lot better. And uh, there's a, a preparation for the next gen AMD Epic CPUs. Yay, way to yeah. go. <laughs> and speaking of AMD, if you're looking for that uh, 5700 and 5700XD 5, support, that's not there yet. Mm -hmm. That You're going to have to wait for kernel 5.3. Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm like, nope, throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, that one. If you want to use that one, you have to have the latest version Mesa or just use the proprietary implementation that uh, AMD has released. Uh, one of the things that popped out at me is like, oh, case insensitive name lookups for EXT4. Yeah, oh, that was interesting. Oh, really? Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. L L this L is L Linux. Let's <laughs> yeah. talk about this holy war. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, that was a bit of a holy war when EXT4 came out. And, you know, mm -hmm. people were hoping. It's like, okay, can we have a same level of parody, quote unquote, uh, with the other uh, operating systems, file systems, and how they don't really care about case sensitiveness? Well, uh, apparently it took uh, kernel 5.2 to actually introduce something along those lines. You know, I, uh, I watched somebody on our Linux. They were terribly upset about this development. Uh, yes. I mean, just went full metal screechy re, -re for like three paragraphs. You know, long enough where you, you're like, this, this is crazy enough where I want to read, but you get tuckered out. You're like, I can't deal with this. Yeah, no. <laughs> then this is immediately followed by the one post of like, then don't enable it. Right? <laughs> Drop mic. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's good to see, but it, it's just, you know, for name lookups, that, that that's all it's doing. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> we're just used to it, you know? I, I mean, I guess yeah. like coming over to like a case sensitive file system, but that's mm -hmm. the right way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, mm -hmm. I I have naming conventions that rely on the same name in different cases. So, because <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm lazy. All right. Good news, everyone. Microsoft, hang on. Do, do I, wait. Ah, boo. Do I have my. Uh, These are not good news. Da, 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 Microsoft Jobs <laughs> yeah. Linux. There we go. <laughs> yes, there we go. Agreed. Um, hey, Microsoft, why is the Escape Snap app hopelessly outdated? A little hypey there. OMG. Oh, never mind. OMG Ubuntu. Um, the official Skype Snap app for Linux has not been updated in, wait for it, 
nearly six months in Microsoft, don't give a delete expletive. Um, <laughs> this is just an issue with the snap, not an issue if you download it. I think there's a Debian file or something like that, which you could just install. Um, I don't even know if they got around to setting up a PPA. I almost don't want to say they did. But yeah, I mean, it is a chunk of versions behind yeah. and yeah. Mm -hmm. Microsoft's to blame. But I thought Microsoft loved Linux, Pedro. Microsoft does love Linux, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, Microsoft saw that Canonical was doing their big hype about, ooh, snaps are the future, snaps are the thing, you should totally support it. And they released a snap, and then they never bothered to update it, because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, uh, this snap thing, it's not actually going anywhere. Uh, I, I'm not even going to I, I take a uh, little issue. A... Look at that, man. It's like option number one, the oldest we got. It's vintage. <laughs> yeah, it's there. Joe, you'd love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. it's i'm not even going to blame microsoft for this one because snaps the whole thing the whole drive behind snaps at this point has been canonical zone hype and they're they're the ones that have building that particular hype and it's just not there yet no matter how hard some people really want it to be it's not. I'm, I, I, and I, I, you get a company that's like, hey, man, I'll build a snap. And hey, man, I'm not going to keep it updated, even though it's part of the responsibility of making it. And Pedro's like, yeah, it's not your fault, bro. Don't worry about it. I, I got to take a shot at uh, real quick. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take a shot at snaps because besides still having that stupid lowercase folder. I don't care if it's directly, snaps. I don't care if it's app images. I don't care if it's flat packs. But I want everyone to sit back, open your eyes and think real hard. This is your future. This is your containerized future because it's not mm -hmm. just the app that needs to be updated it's everything packed in with it and it's not necessarily quick no yeah. no it's not it's basically if you were trying to implement vulcan into a video game engine and you actually had to do all of the work you know nope. press vulcan button. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it's it, next yeah, to the muffin the, button it's right there in the, the article does mention that uh snaps were introduced along with flat packs uh, in and around the same time uh, in an effort to combat the quote unquote fragmentation or perceived fragmentation of package managers. However, and this is especially mm -hmm. true of snaps, all they've done is create the living embodiment of XKCD927. It's <laughs> the standards thing all over again. It's another yeah. one. Great. But I'll go ahead and. Yeah broken record i don't care if it snaps i don't care if it's flat packs app mm -hmm. images whatever containerized applications on the desktop don't make any damn sense and they never will mm -hmm. it's good for testing something <laughs> yeah. that you might want to install later <laughs> operative word install mm -hmm. later because it's like ooh, what do i get slower loading types out of date software and in this case proprietary back end <laughs> let's not forget that um <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, on server, it make, you can make that argument to me, and I won't like yeah. it, but I'll be go, I'll be go English old man. Okay, in uh, a yeah. server, like you, you, you can implement that. Right. Yeah, you I can, can buy that. Use a snap, and it will work without messing with the rest of the system. That is important it's if you want reliability on that server. And this yeah. is this is Electron. <laughs> this this is Exhibit. Yo, dog. Um, <laughs> <laughs> container within a container. <laughs> Okay, anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's nothing to get upset about. Uh, we got to thank the beautiful party people that are making this show possible, allowing us to bring it to you ad free, live, loud, mm -hmm. independent. And uh, you're awesome for doing that. And mm -hmm. patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Jill, do we get anybody new this week that we yes. can say, hey, you're super cool? Yay, J Girl. She's one of our Linux chicks of Los Angeles. And called uh, it. Totally called yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's run the Mil Mozilla booth at scale many times. And she's also uh, goes to our uh, Linux Gamecast parties. So she's a, a big viewer of our network, which is awesome. And we love you, J Girl. You're awesome. <laughs> that is awesome for kicking us a few shekels every month. But <laughs> yes. Pedro, we, we kind of like to dance for our money don't we do we kick a few things back mm -hmm. up to and including like a customized rss feed with an extra hour of uh pre-show yes, an the extra stuff? hour of basically completely unfiltered mm -hmm. content where it we don't even have the pretense of show notes to go on 
you basically just get the raw unedited uh well there is a little bit of editing uh but <laughs> you just get the raw linux game cast unlike experience. this highly script we're all reading off scripts right now yeah uh, yes totally absolutely <laughs> yes. right there you where was i yeah. uh, uh oh that, right, yep. right. sorry my bad i should have paused man. there <laughs> but yeah besides that you also get uh access to our discord which j girl is very much a part of thank you very much j girl mm -hmm. and welcome what about discord what um, if i just want to like irc man you can <laughs> uh, as long as the uh chat uh the chat bridge bot is active and if it's not you need to kick jordan and or mt uh, in the buttocks, b so that they can reboard the uh, the bot. It hasn't uh, happened <laughs> enough times to where it's a cron shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it happens every two or three months. No. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. That's definitely a thing. Uh, we do have uncut episodes of our show. Uh, we don't like putting anything behind a paywall, so you always get that like a week later. If you're like, screw you guys, I just want to watch the content. Dance monkeys. We make that available. Uh, podcast audio. That's where most of you are listening to mm -hmm. us. Uh, that's great. That's awesome. Um, thanks for letting us do this. Uh, not just this. Yep. I mean, Saturdays. Pedro, you did a uh, spooky, horrible, terrifying game. Little nightmares. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, the the one thing I can point out about that game is the controller was pulsing in time with my own heartbeat. So that yeah. was a little bit disconcerting. <laughs> We're able to pull that off this show. Jordan's got a show on Thursdays, which is like some D&D &D with a laser stuff. Yeah, I, I rock doing... out on Fridays when <laughs> I got my wolf exploitation coming back this week. We got a big show yes. on Saturday, and I do need to remember to point out we have Libra Pay. I hooked that nightmare back up. Not Ooh. that Libra Pay is bad, but the, the payment thing requires like your birth certificate and the 16 forms of ID, but that's together. We're back on that. I know. Don't get confused. It's like, we've been a member for two years. Their payment processor, like two years ago, apparently like mm -hmm. went back. So it's sorted back out. Uh, Amazon links and wish list items for everybody. Everybody's been awesome. Uh, just mm -hmm. thanks again. Uh, mm -hmm. it's pretty Thank cool. you. We love you. Come say hi in discord. We're hanging out there the other six days a week. We've got a weird community. If we had more money, we'd be called eccentrics, <laughs> but we're just kind of a little off. <laughs> All right. That's cool. Keep being beautiful. Keep being sexy. Time for a slice mm -hmm. pie. Quill. Pie. Nice. Don't eat it. Actually, eat Some it. nice. I'll get the camera. Chill pie this week. It's not chill yeah. pie. Because uh, yeah, <laughs> someone has decided, you know what's really popular in the desktop environments? Tower coolers. You know what the Raspberry mm -hmm. Pi doesn't have? A tower cooler of its own. <laughs> well, it does now. Uh, it's the... <laughs> uh, awesome. What do they call it? It's the ICE Tower CPU Cooling Fan. And uh, this one is targeted at the Raspberry Pi 4, but as Jill will point out, it works with mm -hmm. more. And uh, it's available for uh, $19.90 of your uh, hard-earned wet stinky caches. And it does a very good job of keeping that Pi cool. So many people yeah. went from, okay, A, it, and if you're looking at it, it's a little baby Hyper 212. It's so cute. Yeah, it's with a the single adorable. little heat pipe. <laughs> They've sold yeah. this because people have looked at it and went, aww. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Followed by, yeah. and it's only 20 bucks. I, yeah, I'm going to buy one, of course. Uh, of course. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm 100. I, I, I support this. Just because yeah, it's definitely. cute. And, you know, it's compatible with all mm. recent Pi boards, including the Raspberry Pi 4, and can reduce the temperature of the Raspberry Pi from 80 Celsius to 40 Celsius. Pretty awesome. Yay. Just like uh, modern uh, coolers we have in our uh, our, our big boxes. Yeah. And <laughs> scale-wise, awesome. it sort of looks like uh, this, a yeah, Hyper the 212 correct scale. would look on yeah. a <laughs> Micro ATX motherboard. Hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> Very good job. Also, yeah. uh, as someone who has those uh, 40 millimeter fans, those are loud. Those are like really loud. And just saying, <laughs> don't worry, babies are loud too. <laughs> yeah, people have them all the time. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a way to like Ellen to cool a pie without cracking it. <laughs> um, because experiment mm -hmm. one's just going to be dipping it in and seeing what yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're cheap enough. All right. Uh, there's been an yeah. issue with uh, USB-C. No, not the 
vast cornucopia of existing issues that is USB-C, a new no, one. No, no, no. This is a new one because the Raspberry Pi 4 is new. And as we know, we talked about it last week, the Raspberry Pi 4 comes with a USB-C connector for power. And, well, they didn't exactly implement it to spec, despite the spec being open and available and out there, and it has been out there for the longest time. They decided, eh, Maybe we don't need these two resistors. We're just going to use one instead. And, uh, well, in doing that, it meant that the um, any uh, cable, any uh, laptop uh, power supply, any uh, Type-C dock will recognize the Pi 4 as an audio device. Mm. So <laughs> if you have a cable, seriously, no, uh, a USB Type-C cable that can identify your Raspberry Pi 4 uh, or its power delivery circuit as being not up to spec, you done goofed. Mm. You're really, <laughs> yeah. really done goofed. <laughs> Dude, I mean, this is, this is like herder. I get it. I get. I understand why they yeah. did it. They're like, well, it was overlooked. You did it to save money. I know why you did it. Mm -hmm. All right. Just don't lie to people. People are smarter than you give them credit to. Mm-hmm. USB-C is already a trip to begin with because I got a couple of USB-C cables. They're labeled now <laughs> because some <laughs> work with some, some don't. Some charge, some have data, some don't. And yeah. how can you tell? Plugging them in. <laughs> this Pretty is how you tell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thus the labeling. Well, uh, no, yeah. no, I just think this is like putting hard mode into it. The only surefire way they mentioned in the article, which before knowing this, I was like, what I've known of USB-C, I think like most of you at home thought, oh, they're selling a cable charge, a USB-C charger with it. I'm buying that. Mm -hmm. Just not to have to deal with it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And like, like Vin um, said, just uh, buy the official Pi 4 charger and you'll have no problems. And uh, they say that this, of course, will be fixed in a few months on an upcoming revision board. So... They're going to be qu fixing this very quickly <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> they got to be careful when they fix it, though, because then everybody's going to be like, um, but this one I bought that you just admitted was defective. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. That's, that's so, so you're be... saying that the one you sold me previously was sub spec. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Aww. it'll be a collector's item, too. <laughs> <laughs> If you'd like to get a hold to us, how can they go about doing that, Pedro? <laughs> well, you can do that very easily by going to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button on the nav bar, and you make sure to fill out the form. Uh, it's very easy. Just make sure you pick LWDW on the little show a selection box, and that's it. Just type in your message. Uh, send us your Raspberry Pi projects. Anything that you happen to be working on that you want to show off, feel free to send it our way. And this mm -hmm. week, well... We did have one bit of YouTube comments, which you can totally uh, get um, your uh, comment in on YouTube, and chances are we'll probably end up reading it. And if it is relevant, we'll feature it right here, like is the case with Mike G. So mm -hmm. you may remember Mike G. <laughs> nope. Uh, yeah. Yay. Uh, it's not like he's bought us all of the things of our wish lists. Uh, and he says, Listen, man, the amount that dude makes fun of me in my black shirt. So me and Mike got beat. <laughs> <all right. laughs> so uh, on uh, last week's show on YouTube, he says, uh, the amount of gnome slander on this podcast is getting alarming. Your face is getting alarming. Um, Pedro, glad you liked the mouse. I expect your game will improve. No, I well, expect that it will as well. I just... Not using it yet because the fine, come fine with a folks, free hand. It, it's still here because it still doesn't work with the CKB it, decks. It, it, it doesn't blink hard enough for him. This is what I don't he's care trying about to say. that. Yeah, I want the, I want this button to be E. I want this one to be F. I want this one to be R. This one to be Q. And this one right here to be the space bar. That's all I yeah. want. Yeah. That's a whole, are you sure you don't want it like Julianne Fries? <laughs> that's how I have the Rocat set up, and I'm pretty sure at the moment that I can do that on that mouse, this Rocat is going to live on Nori's desk. Well, it uh, is desk. awesome. I want to thank you, Mike, because I know what Pedro's <laughs> done is mm -hmm. he sent in a bug report, and he's dumped info, and yep. he's given them data bits. So, in a way, this yeah. will help out other people who need mm -hmm. their mouse to do something more than click. <laughs> yes. Yeah, pretty much. That's what the kids <laughs> use it for these days, man. Um, mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. We do have a question. Yeah. 
from Peter P. Yeah. So Peter P. says, after the 32-bit fiasco, I'm looking to switch from Ubuntu to Solus or possibly Arch. I mostly do general computing mixed with occasional gaming. Interested in learning about any possible issues I might encounter. And yeah, Pedro had a, a lot to say about this. Take it away, Sir Clicks a lot. <laughs> okay. So uh, those two suggestions, they're like the polar opposites of the rolling release thing. Yeah, one of them is yeah. a real operating system. <laughs> well, I would argue that they both are because I'm running one of Don't them. Don't me, bro. but uh, <laughs> it, yeah. Solus has had some uh, issues, and the development philosophy is a bit baffling at times. If you don't know what DKMS is, Solus mm -hmm. is the one for you, because they don't have it. And they don't support mm -hmm. it, and they never will. I don't know why, but it's their yeah. thing. Uh, but mm -hmm. seeing as Solus is currently one of the very few distros that will actually run the new Ryzen 3000 CPUs... And given that I've been running it for more than a year nonstop on this particular box, that is my recommendation. Solus is very much for general computing mixed with occasional gaming. That is very much um, along the lines with my use case, more on the gaming side, but it works mm -hmm. very well for that. Then again, you have some people on the internet saying that, oh, Arch! is the second coming of Jesus Christ. So <laughs> try it for yourself. Hmm? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, another uh, suggestion I had was Manjaro. And actually several people in, in chat, including Rohit, pointed that out and Artharin. So yeah, it, it's actually very stable and runs the games quite nicely <laughs> with with gaming. I've, I have... I have do have it installed on one of my systems here and it runs really nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's neat. Um, you're both wrong. But, um, <laughs> if you're gonna you're say both that, wrong. Of course. Um, <laughs> you're wrong in stereo. Um, oh, I've actually been running Solus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I love Solus, too. All right, too. then, condescending Ven, what would you yeah. recommend? Condescending. Listen, man, call me by my original name, Judas. Um, <laughs> think it Old Testament on you all. Um, I'm going to say, if I was looking for something, it was coming off um, Ubuntu, it depends on what you're on. This Debian mm -hmm. thing just came out. Yes. Like version 10. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a wicked easy transition for you. I don't know if you then switching that over to testing, that might be something to look into. Or if you want to play active, if you want like real hard mode and have some fun, might I suggest Fedora? It's think yeah, of it, that works. all the difficulties yeah. of Arch with none of the documentation. <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, a lot less breakage too. Yes. Also, if you're planning, like, I don't know where you're at in your career and all that, and you're like, no, nope, this is just mm -hmm. something I want to, you know, if you want something to play with, yes, Arch. If you want something to get some work done, or if you general purpose device, go with Debian. If you want something that you're going to run into in the wild, unless, you know, you get a job in Cloud City, um, if you're going to be running into Scent and Rel, Fedora is going to give you a taste of that. Mm -hmm. And it's still going to run everything modern. But it can die in a fire if you're not careful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, uh, yeah. Uh, Solus is interesting. I just, you know, like weird things like the DKMS. I'm like, why? And it's yeah. like, well, mm -hmm. uh, here, let me tell you. Come in. And it's like, okay. Uh, reasons. Okay. Um, yeah, honestly, as someone who's been running Solus for this long, <laughs> I have zero, zero idea as to why they're doing that. But. Yeah, it, mm. no DKMS and Solus. Uh, but by all accounts, Solus has been a fantastic, uh, and you know, there's going clear Linux. Mm -hmm. No relation yeah. to the Church of clear Scientology. Linux. Yeah. I don't believe choice. Tom Cruise runs it. Maybe he does, maybe not. Mm -hmm. I'll judge. Run. And yeah, like Ven said, Debian uh, testing is actually very stable. Uh, I, I have it installed on a lot of the computers here. So that's, it is a very good option. 
<laughs> Find what you like. All right. Yeah. Yep. It's beautiful. We're going to bounce out of here. Speaking of beautiful, you're beautiful. Everybody's yeah. watching. Be happy. Be fun. Stay vintage. I mean, if you're more than like a year old, you're vintage. Right, Joe? <laughs> yep. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just play along at this point. <laughs> Credits. Okay, Yay. mute me now, Fun, because I'm going to have to run out and go to the bathroom. I'm. You can't. Oh. Oh. Thank you to our wonderful chat room, our our executive producers. We did. Yay! Show. We love you. We're still here. And our producers. <laughs> 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 hey man, we try to keep you entertained on Wednesdays. Wednesdays is like the crap of yeah. days, man. It's the false hope of the days of the week, man. Because you can't even, you don't have that little extra <laughs> energy that Thursday brings. You're like, man, it's not yeah. nice Friday. Wednesdays, you're just stuck. You can and... still be a little hungover from the weekend <laughs> on Wednesdays. Yes, this is true. And uh, Jill's read thank many you. books about hangovers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And thank you for putting up with me being tongue-tied this episode. <laughs> I can't mouse today. <laughs> Say bye, Pedro. <laughs> bye, Sarah. We love you. Bye, Pedro.